Hi guys, Nick here with BitGalaxis bringing you a new video on 3D video game development and today I wanted to go over building a model in Blender 3D uh, but I'm actually going to start out in pixelart.com because I'm going to make our texture using pixel art and then apply that to a model that we're going to create later and the model that I've chosen is pretty simple it's actually just a TV because it gets all the basics across but adds a little bit of complexity because um, I want to get started and just show you how you can do all these things without getting overly complex um, because I feel like if you see this stuff maybe you take it and run with it um, so First off, pixelart.com. So when you get here, there's a start drawing. Just click on that and it's gonna load up and you'll say, oh, it's got a blank cabinet and it's gonna be 100 by 100. I like to use 32 by 32 because it's not too large. I can split it into quadrants um, and that's just how I like to do things. So I'm gonna say new drawing. And so the reason why I like to have 32 by 32 is because I can do quadrants of 16 by 16. So what I first start out with is since I don't really know how to guesstimate the middle, I always just draw an X. And this X, this red X here, you'll see these four boxes, that's the middle. So what I then do is I'll just make another square, um, make four different squares of different colors. And we'll say blue here, and we'll pick red for this one, and we'll pick uh, green for the other one. And so I have four quadrants, and the reason why I do this is because I'll have different parts of my model uh, that I want to put different parts in. Now, in reality, uh, these textures that you want to apply to 3D models, you don't want to do this because it's not as efficient. But if you're like just starting out and you're making pretty simple models that don't have a whole lot required for them, um, the reason why I do this is so I can break it up into segments. So what I tend to do um, is like for this blue section up here. So like the reason why I do. Uh, like different quadrants is like I will make two different textures and so like the blue quadrant I will make like for emission so I'll put my emissive colors up here and so the emissive colors that I like to use tend to be like greens bright greens like a lime green um, and I'll make a little a square for bright green uh, and then fill it in and then I'll make a square for white because white's one emissive color that's you know pretty common you'll see white lights or things like that or you can make it an off-white whatever color you want to use but the point of this is an emissive color is a color that you intend to use for lights um, and so I'm also going to put in I like to use bright red this red's kind of okay but I prefer more of a like a, a like a really just pure red and I think this one gets pretty close so I'll use that one and oops I filled in the whole thing and sometimes I like to use yellow or maybe a neon blue. You can do anything you want really. But the point of it is I wanna have some kind of uh, bright colors for emission later. Now, really all I'm doing is by saying that this is red or this is blue or green or white or whatever, um, I'm not gonna use this exact texture. I'm gonna copy this texture, but then I'm gonna make everything else black um, so that there is no emission for other things. Um, but anything that I want to have a mission when I model, I'm going to move the, like the, the piece of the model in here um, so that it's green and then it's a mission is green. So uh, we'll, we'll show you that when we get there. Now I want to get this red and copy that and then draw a line. So in pixelart.com, there's this little dropper, your color picker. You can see all the tools I've been using here already. I haven't really explained them, but obviously we have a square. We have a bucket tool if you're familiar with paint. This is the exact same tools. It's just in a different, you know, different layout. So, um, and now I'm going to fill in these colors just so I have a background to work with. I'll go through that and then have my quadrants ready to go. So you don't have to do this. I just draw those quadrants and I like to work and make sure I'm filling things out and have a background um so that i'm you know catching everything making sure that i'm not missing and having like transparency in the background uh so i fill these in until i have all my bottles done and then i usually fill in everything with black at the end of it so um so like i said the model that we're making is a television so one of the things i want to start with is maybe the face of it so for the face of it you know i'm going to use like a classic uh, CRT television like I'm not talking like an LCD flat screen so you know a lot of times they have wood so I'm gonna go like this and I'll just you know put the wood panel on here and like this is the outer part of it um, and uh, we'll do this we'll make it kind of like a lot of times you know that the TV has like a panel on the left here and I'll take this black uh, and we'll actually I'm just gonna use a color picker and take this black and just kind of leave it like this so you know a lot of the old CRTs they had the side panel with the controls and things like that. Um, and you would, you know, have your controls here. So let me, um, color picking, 
and then drawing. And then uh, you might have like this gray uh, metal uh, panel for like your controls and things like that. And what I'm not liking here is I'm already finding a problem with it is that I don't have enough space. So what I'm gonna do probably is I'm actually gonna go ahead and select this entire thing here and drag it down because I want my face to have a little more, um, have a little more room to work with. So I'm not, should I do this? I'll do this, there we go. And now um, I'm going to fill in the rest of this with black again. And then I'm going to use my color picker, draw a line, and now I have a little control panel like that. So one of the things you can do, um, like the TV set would have like different shades of gray, like the inset. We're gonna kind of shade it so it looks like it's inset a little bit. I'm gonna get um, a dark gray here and just draw the, along the bottom here and the corner here. So it's kind of like the lights up here. And then, oh, you know what? I'm doing the opposite. I need to actually color this part darker gray and this part a lighter gray uh, like this. So there, now it kind of looks like it's inset a little bit. If you want to put in some buttons there, we might make like a, a little, you know, panel of buttons like that. And uh, just kind of maybe do that. Um, what I'll do here is I'll just make this whole top part gray or actually a lighter gray here. Uh, and then there's some buttons there. We'll have like a red button maybe. Just pick a red color for the power button and then maybe uh you know green or something for something else just to, just to, some detail some some stuff we could put on there now the tv also has a back side so what we'll do is um we're going to uh put in like a lot of these old crts had like little holes in them so i'm gonna get like a gray uh get like a gray color here and we will fill this out, fill this in, and then for those holes, we'll just put little black dot, little darker gray dots here. So we color pick this color, and we we'll say, we're gonna use this for like part of our model um, on the back side. And you know, this stuff doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, what I would say is it's more important, like if you think, oh, well, I want to do this, so I want to do that, and I want to have, I have all these ideas and I might change them. What I would recommend is making, like getting through your first texture, even though it's pretty rough, uh, because you're going to have all these ideas you come up with and they're going to change. And it's like, what's the point in making it perfect if you might end up changing it anyway? So just get it done, get it out of the way. Don't worry about being perfect um, and getting everything exactly right. Like, oh, I, you know, thinking about everything up front because you are going to change it. Uh, and then you'll be like, well, I, I wasted all that time trying to make it perfect. So one of the things we can do, um, I, I kind of already have a different idea and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and add it now because I'm sure I'm going to keep using it. But, I, you know, they have these wood panels and it doesn't look like wood. So I'm going to take this color here and I'm going to fill it in, fill that in. And then I'm going to add like little uh, little bits of brown. Your color palette's over here. If you're, if you're just watching this and seeing, you're like, oh, this is obvious. You know, you're picking your colors on the right. You're going to your tools, bucket, bit dropper, things like that. Um, if there's pieces that you'd like me to explain, um, just leave a comment and I'll explain how I did this stuff. Uh, in Blender, it might get a little bit more complicated and it's very possible I might miss a step where it's like, it's not obvious because Blender uses a lot more keyboard shortcuts, but pixel art is completely visual. So hopefully you're picking up on everything here. If you're not, like I said, just leave a comment. Um, now there's this paintbrush you could use, but the paintbrush, um, I don't like that too much. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the pencil and just kind of, you know, draw in some what looks like wood and go from there and kind of hope that looks looks like wood paneling, you know. And so we're just doing this old fashioned, you know, hopefully, hopefully most of you are old enough that you remember these TVs. Um, I certainly do. Um, now one thing I wanna do is actually, I wanna kind of make sure that these are, uh, the same height because I, I like to when we're doing is like these pixel ver version of things um you know having the same height helps when you're drawing because you can kind of line them up and, and make them look like they're consistent um, really just for a consistency of experience uh or the visuals so and there we go got the wood paneling uh that's okay there i'm not gonna worry eh, I'm, I'm gonna be picky i'm gonna get rid of that so we'll have the, this will be the side panel, this will be the front, and this will be also part of the back 
um, and we'll also have it as uh, this is part of the back as well. So um, with that in mind, I think I've got everything I need. Um, ooh, you know what? Now thinking about it, those TVs were interlaced, and I think what I'm probably going to do is I'll have a uh, have this TV here, the screen, be somewhat interlaced. So I'll have like a white emission, but then I'm also going to have like maybe a little bit of, of gray, um, like as an interlaced, you know, piece of it, and go like that. Um, and maybe, let's see, maybe I'll make this a little bit less white here and use uh, this darker. There we go. I think that'll work pretty well. We can also do static. I don't really see, like, I might use that for green and I might use that for red, but this here could also be like, we'll just make this static and just, you know, actually we'll fill it in with white and then add some static here. And just make some little, you know, maybe if we want to do a static screen on the, on the TV, uh, have it flickering or something like that. You know, static was pretty inconsistent. and So there we go. I think that looks good. So we'll call that. So we'll have one version with, with interlaced, like a white screen, and then this is static. So um, that's it for the texture. Um, what we'll do is then we'll say next, we'll say file, download. And then here's the piece where it kind of becomes important. I want you to understand why I'm doing this. So originally I made the image 32 by 32. Well, I don't want to use 32 by 32 on my models because it won't look pixelated. It'll look fuzzy because your the, the engine, Unity 3D or Blender, is going to try to uh, smooth those out. So what we can do instead is we can keep those, but we can also say, let's make it 512 by 512. Right, and this is a this is a size I kind of pick because to me it looks pretty clean. It looks like oh those pixels are there, they're very clear, um, they're not smooth too much. You could probably go to 256 by 256, but I would keep it you know square um, and a a uh, to the power of two. So 512, but by 512 is a power of two. Um, I think that's uh, a nine two to the ninth or something like that, or two to the eighth. Um, so we'll go ahead and download that. So I'm back in here and I've already started clearing out the other three panels. I want to make these all black. Um, and the reason, again, why I do this is because um, I use, I have a second texture for, I'm, for my emission. I don't want my side panels to glow, like the wood to glow. I just want the front TV panel. So we're going to put the TV panel over here. And then we're also going to have this emission where it glows. So we can just overlap these as is and use the exact same emission texture as we use for our skin texture. Um, and then if, if everything else is black, that means there's not going to be any emission where there's black. I'm going to download that and save it over here and I'll be back. Okay, so here we are in Blender, and you can download this for free from blender.org, and uh, I'll put a link in the description to this. So when you start out, you'll have this, this little splash screen here. Um, you can say general, um, and I, use, I usually just recommend going with general. And so a couple things I want to point out, you're going to start out with they call a scene here. You've got, in this main area, you've got your camera, you've got a light, you've got a cube, uh, a couple things I want to point out here is you've got this little scene collection here and you've got your camera, cube, and light. If you left click, so your normal click, you can select these items and each of these. And then um, the first thing I do, because I'm not going to be using this in a Blender scene, I usually import these things in the games, is I just delete them. So I'm going to delete the light and I press X to delete and then it says delete, click on delete. Same thing with the camera, you press X to delete and delete. Now, with that cube there, I'm gonna leave it so I can kind of go over some other controls here real quick um, and just explain how we do some things. So your mouse wheel, if you have a mouse, um, will help you to rotate. So if you click on your mouse wheel and move the mouse around, you're gonna rotate around your scene view. Your mouse wheel also scrolls in, scrolls out, and there may be other controls. I would suggest looking them up because I actually don't know them. Um, I'm, all, I'm just so used to doing it with a mouse. Um, but mouse wheel, you grab it, move around, um, and that's how you move. And you can scroll in, scroll out. Now, if you want to change your view, um, for example, I'm here, and you want to see this the front, you press on the numpad, numpad 1. If you want to see the top, numpad 7. And you want to see from, I think, the left, you're from the left, you're going to press numpad 3. So from the front, from the left, from the top is how you view those. Again, use your mouse wheel to move. 
Um, and then if you want to go into orthographic view, you go and you press five and that toggles orthographic or perspective. Orthographic means that it's, there is no like vanishing point. So, you know, it's like, you'll see, this is kind of like if you're working in isometric, um, you want to use orthographic view, but if you want to actually see like what it would look like if we were looking at it in person, then you use perspective. So, um, and that's, that's the basics of movement and viewing. If there's more options you want to know about, let me know. If you want to like just incrementally like toggle through views like this, I think it's about 15 degrees each time you press. That's six and this is four and this is eight, you know, so you can keep scrolling around using six, four and eight. And I think you could even do shift. Um, if you press shift and six, then it kind of spins your camera or your perspective around and not your world, you know, not your world. So here's one, and then I'm going to use shift and six and see now I've, I've rotated 90 degrees uh, and Z is actually to my right. So anyway, um, Z is up. You'll see this little gizmo here that kind of shows you Z is up, Y is back, and X is left and right. So um, pretty simple stuff. Um, this this is a new feature I think that Unity involved in, in, introduced in like I think 2.8. I'm not sure exactly which one, but it used to not be there. Um, so pretty cool and handy to have now. Um, so, um, let's get into modeling our TV. The first thing I want to do is actually click on this and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to say X to delete, right? Cause I want to show you something, uh, in terms of how you add a, an object. So we have our cursor. This is our 3d cursor. It's in the space. And I just want to add something at the 3d cursor. What you have to do is you do shift and then A to add, and we're gonna say a mesh, right? So shift A mesh. You can also go up here and click add. It's gonna do the same thing. I use, I use the keyboard shortcuts a lot because it's a lot faster, but if you're new to Blender, I can see why it's hard to remember all of them. But if you use it a lot, you'll get used to it. So I'm gonna do shift A. Actually, I'm just gonna do it through the button mode because I think that might be easier to remember. So add mesh, and we're gonna add a cube, right? And so now that we have our cube, one thing I need to do is I need to move it. So I want to move it up so that the bottom is flat with the plane. Um, Cause in Unity 3D, the center of this is going to be that cursor there. So I'm going to grab it by pressing G and oh man, you can move it anywhere. If you press G to grab it when it's selected, but if you press the Z key, it's going to lock it to just that axis, right? I want to move it on the Z axis. And then if you press control, it snaps once for so you're pressing control while you drag it snaps and boom now i've snapped it one and this is basically a six foot tall tv <laughs> at this point we don't really need it to be that size we can scale it what i'm going to do is probably scale it when i'm done with it uh and make it more appropriate that way but um now let's get into how do we change the shape of this tv how do we make it different so once you have the object selected if you press your tab key now you are in edit mode and you can see here i have six little dots so the up here you know why are we selecting dots so i've got these little dots for each vector each corner every little spot where there's you know lines meet is is a vector you can change your mode into vector mode edge mode by pressing two or face mode by pressing three so in each of these modes they're also up here. So if you want to remember, I want to select a vector. I want to work with edges. I want to work with faces. Then that's how you do it. You change it up here, but you might want to remember one, two, three. So I've got, you know, one is a vector. Two is an edge. Three is a face. So when you're in edge, when you're in face mode, you can't select a vector. You can't select one face. You're going to have to pick a whole face. So I do want to move this face or, and I can do that either via face mode or edge mode. So like if you go to space mode and you just click a face, when you go back to edge mode, it's gonna have all four edges for that face selected. And if you go to vector mode, it's gonna have all four vectors selected for that as well. You can do what I'm about to do in any mode. Um, so I'm just gonna keep it in vector mode. I'm going to press G to grab it. And I wanna move it along the Y axis back and forth because we're gonna make it flatter. And then I'm going to press control and I'm going to leave it about there. You know, that seems pretty fine. So this next thing I'm going to do, I want to do it from a face. Now I can select each of these vertices, you know, 
individually until I have four selected. And to multi-select, you press shift. So I shift, then I shift select that, shift select that. And see, I don't have a full face yet, but I have two edges. By selecting that one, I get the full face, four edges, all four vectors, so it's gonna apply to that face. But what I wanna do, I'll go to face mode, press three, or click on that. And now I have this, I have this face selected. And what I wanna do is I wanna make that little back part of the TV that sticks out a little bit. So one way to do that is to either extrude or inset. I think the easiest way to do that is to inset. So I'm gonna press I, I will inset. And then you can move this back and forth, you know, and you, it'll resize a little plane inside of this. You might say, well, what's the use of that? Well, now what we're gonna next do is now that I have inset, I can also extrude and pull it out. So I did the inset with I and extrude. I used, I pressed E on the keyboard. E will extrude. So now that I have that, those back pieces of the TV usually aren't perfectly square. So I can press S, S is gonna scale. So I press S and then I move my mouse in and it scales the plane. So that, that face, it's scaling the face. Obviously the face is flat, so it's only gonna go in the X, Y direction. If I were to select the whole object, we can scale the entire object and it will scale according to all three axes. So here, now that I've scaled that face down, let's see what happens if I tab out into object mode and now I have my object. If I press S now, it's gonna scale the entire TV in all directions. Just as an, as an example, we're gonna do that at the end. So now I need to tab back into edit mode because I wanna do the same thing for the front. And I will click on this face, I'll press inset. And remember that we had a little bit of a sidebar on the TV. And so I'm gonna grab this face and see how I can move this face. I'm gonna also say I wanna move this on the X axis and move it over a little bit, right? Because we weren't perfectly um, in the middle there. And then I wanna grab this face too, because remember that TV um, was not like this, these three parts were the same size. So I'm gonna grab this and again on Y, sorry, on X, move it over so it looks about even. And maybe I'll move this one over to give it a little more space on the, on the right side here for that panel. And on this piece, I do kind of want to bring this in a bit, so I'm going to do extrude, but I'm going to pull it backwards and go like that. So you can actually extrude, extrude inwards too. So that is pretty close to the model we want. So we've used uh, inset and extrude to get to this point. So we use E to extrude, press I to inset, and then we also used uh, scale, which is S to scale, and then G to grab. And then if we want to lock it along an axis, after we press S or G, we then press X, Y, or Z. Now, let's say you want to scale along everything but X. Well, then you do the opposite. You press Shift X. So you press Shift X. If you want to do Shift Select, we'll let you select multiple things. So you can do Shift, Shift. Just keep holding Shift and clicking, and you're going to select multiple faces. And that'll let you multiple select. Um, if you want to change from edge mode to face mode to vertice mode, you just or vertex select. Here is vertex, edge, face by selecting these or one, two, three on your keyboard. Not the numpad, the actual like you know home row at the top of your home row one, two, three on your keyboard. Numpad one puts you at the front. So remember, one is vertex, one on numpad is front. So that's three on numpad. This is three on your keyboard changes to face mode. So remember there's a difference between what the numbers do depending on what they are. So um, like I said, you can still always select here, X, Y, and Z, or here for the buttons. So that's the basics of Blender. Now that's modeling. The next part is gonna be our texturing. Okay, so now we're at texturing. We're gonna go into this tab up here, right here you see layout. We were working in layout. You can also do it from modeling, it's the same thing. Um, but layout also has an animation uh, pane down here. So we wanna go into UV editing. So UV editing, we've got a couple of steps that we gotta go through in order to add this texture to our TV. So 
what we're first going to do, moving around, just looking at it, I want to pu pull in our image. So what you'll do is you actually, all you have to do is find the image you want and you just drag it in. So I have it over here in my downloads folder. I'm going to drag it in right here and boom, there it is, my texture. It's 512 by 512. Um, but it, it's, it looks like a 32 by 32, so that each of these pixels is actually multiple pixels. Um, now, the next thing I need to do, over here in the modeling mode, I need to make sure I'm in object mode. I'm going to go down to this little pane right here. This should be open, and this is the materials. I'm going to say new. Right here, we've got material one, and we're going to say our base color. Select this. And on this base color, with this menu open, we want to go to image texture. Since we've already brought it in, so you'll see here this new row pops up. Since we've already brought it in, we have to click on this little down arrow. And we have our tv.png. That's what I saved our file as. And now we're going to apply this. Now, it's like, what happened? I thought I just applied the texture and it's still gray. Okay, the next step is now we go up here to viewport shading. And now, oh God, our TV is is nothing, the, the textures are all over the place. They look nothing like what we want. This is pretty terrible to be honest with you, but it's not gonna be hard to fix. So what you can do is now go in, or remember how I said we were in object mode and we tab to go into edit mode. And so we see the object and let's select this face. Oh, now we have the face here, we can see it and we can move it. And that's pretty awesome. Um, pretty helpful and you can kind of guess all right so these two squares at the top I want to rotate this right well how do I rotate rotation works the same in modeling as it does in UV editing if I have this face here I can press the R key to rotate and now I have this face here right and if I were to do this just to show you you can rotate in object mode or in edit mode let's say this face we want to rotate you don't want to do that I didn't mention this during modeling because we didn't use it, but we are going to have to use it in texturing, but rotate, press R, select what you want, press R, that's going to rotate. Um, so I want to have this face be here. Now you might be thinking, well, gosh, I have to do that for every single face. And the answer is no. So remember how we can press one to view our image straight from the front. Great, now we have a perfect view. What if I want to use this view and I want to make sure this entire view here maps to this? What's the easiest way to do that? Well, up here at the top, there's a UV button and you can say project from view. But, oh, I forgot. I didn't select all my faces. So now you see, oh, it's over here. It, it did it just like it's supposed to be, but I need this face, this face, this face, this face, and this face. And I need to say UV project from view. And now they're all together, exactly as I want them. I didn't get these inner parts, but I'm gonna make those a little bit different anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. And what I'll do is I'll go here and I'm gonna go like this. And actually, I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna drag this because I want this to be black. Um, actually, I'm gonna make this uh, be separate. I'm gonna put this up here on the green and scale this down. So this one little face I'm pulling out, I'm gonna make it the uh, the lines here, the render lines, and I'm going to scale out, and I'm also going to scale, but I only want to scale up and down, so I'm going to press Z uh, or Y, yeah Y. So it changes to X and Y when you're in the 2D view, and then I want to scale it again, but I only want to scale it across, so I kind of get it almost perfect, right? Again, I'm not going to make it exactly perfect, but I, you know, getting it pretty close. So now with these other two, right here, or these other four here these four faces. I'm going to scale these down and I'm going to um, move these. I'm going to scale this across by pressing X and kind of get it the right size and I'm going to grab it with G. I'm going to press S to scale again and I'm going to press Y to scale up only and kind of make it the right size and I'm going to drag it down and that looks pretty close. Now there's one other thing. I need to grab this. Actually, yeah, we'll do this. Well, it'll be okay. It's not going to be perfect. Um, like I said, we'll figure out why and we can change the model a bit to match it better. Um, but there you go. Now you have kind of the, uh, 
grab these two this edge here and then move it up on the Y. I'm going to grab this edge here, G, move it down by pressing Y so it's not moving left and right and then just moving it with our mouse. So there you have the front of our TV and one of the things you see because it's not like perfectly proportional those pixels are a little bit slanted so that's not ideal. Um, what we could do with our model is we could move that face and you'll start to see them straighten out but at the end of the day I think I need to kind of map this a little bit better and rework the model um, and you have to tweak it a little bit and this is something that um, you kind of start to get a feel for there's probably a better way of modeling this and I, I, was, I don't want to get too complicated yet um, but I'll show you this and so you can see here we kind of start to get there um, and I'll probably update another video later on that kind of shows my more complex method of tracking this and getting this right. But I won't go into that yet. So for these here, um, I'm going to drag these over here. You can see here we're only seeing the edge. It's not a big deal that you only see the edge. We're going to scale Y. Oh, wait. Scale on the Y. Press S and then Y. And then we're going to press S and then X to scale it on the X and then we'll move it just a little bit and let's see if we actually got those right here it's so one of the things that I want to do is just kinda I don't want to have like the oh is that wrong eh. it is not perfect but I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to get too complex here and try and fix all this and, and tweak it. Um, we'll go from there. So but you can see here we're starting to see our face here, our screen. Uh, and so the next thing we want to do is we want to get this panel. This panel is here. Obviously, we want to rotate this. Um, and you can also, when you press R, you can type in 90. And now it's rotated 90. We will grab this and we're going to drop right here since it's almost the exact size we need and we're going to scale it on the Y so press S and then Y and we'll just kind of move it into place pretty close and the same thing with this face this is actually it needs to be rotated 92 so I'll just press R and then type 90 on my numpad doesn't matter which which one you use grab it move it on the Y so G press Y and then scale it press S and then Y and I'll leave it like that. Press G and then press Y and move my mouse to move it down a little bit. And there is the side of our TV. And we're going to do the same thing for the top. So this is where it's really going to be off because uh, I didn't do it to scale on these. So I'm going to do G. And we will do rotate R, type a 90. And we're going to scale. So press S. And then I'm pressing Y so it only scales on the Y -ax axis. And there's the top of our TV. And the same with the bottom. I think I need to rotate this. R. Type 90. Enter. Press S. Y. Move my mouse out. G and then Y. And then G and then X to move it back a little bit. And so while these aren't exact. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. But you can see there now we have what looks like a pretty pretty decent looking TV. Now, because of this, the scope of this, you can see here, the front of this does not match the front of that very well. And I think if we did like, uh, we're going to grab this and move it along the X a little bit more. Uh, and I think that fixes some of it, but at the end of the day, it's still not fully to scale. So trying to make it better but I'm kind of making it worse um, now let's let's take a look at these three here yeah I mean that's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it for now so I'll leave it like that um, but you can see here you've got the pixel if I were to do this a little bit better let's see if what it looks like rendered yeah I've got to fix some of that so you can see here what problems with it, the, the pixels aren't perfectly straight. Um, and there's ways to fix this. You kind of have to adjust the, uh, like here, you can see here as you go like this, 
what it what it shows me is that I don't have the correct proportions on on the TV here. So it's this is much much too uh, I think it's much too wide. So there. You can see here. So there I'm off on my scale a bit. So you can start to kind of tweak this and find out, you know, how bad am I off and then you can kind of adjust from there going back and forth. You can also see that I went over the seams so you see these bits of green and red um, where I didn't have it perfectly aligned. But let's move on to the back. So I'm going to say on these, this part here, um, I'm not going to use like, I'm going to use only gray, right? So I have all these here, right? So this whole section, like I just want it to be gray. I can literally just move it, make it really tiny. Now it's all gray. And then this back section here, I can move this um, and then scale it up and move it around. And that is literally it. Like that's all you have to do. And then um, we'll save this. I'll save it as a file, save as, or just save. And then you'll save it wherever you want. You just give it a name. Um, I'm gonna name it over here. I'm just gonna call it TV. And then save Blender file. Um, and that's it. Like we've really developed, we've really modeled a TV that you could say is completely done. Remember, if you don't see it, like you go to a different tab and you don't see it, it's because up here, your shading options, there's wireframe, there is flat shading, and then there is uh, your texture shading. So this isn't gonna do like all your perfect lighting. And then there's the rendered shading. This is what it looks like it rendered. Um, if we were to like add a light, um, we could say, uh, oh, we get out of that mode. We'll say, tab into object mode, light, point light. You can see here, <laughs> we have a little have a little light there. Uh, and, and if you don't wanna put, if you just say you wanna make a little scene, right? And you don't really care uh, about, about, you know, um, putting it into, into Unity, this is where you can start to play around with. You just start getting lights and moving them around and um, that's, you know, that's something you could do. You could change the color of these lights if you want to. Um, lots of things you can do. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty, pretty fun stuff you can play around with. Um, I'm not, I don't use Blender a lot for other than just for modeling. I put everything else into Unity when I'm done. Um, I will have another video on how to import this into Blender next week. If you're interested in that, or if you have something else you want to see, um, some other um, video, I could also make the video on how I get the emission working. Once I import it into Unity, you know, you have the the, uh, the texture that you want to apply, but you also have the emission, and I could show you that as well. Um, because we put that screen on the emission part, we have the other emission uh, texture that we added or exported. Um, I'll put that in another video. But anyway, that's everything I've got for today. If you guys liked the video, please hit the like button, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you.